Hi everyone, my name is Alyssa, I read, and welcome to another video, and today we are starting a new reading vlog where I'm reading books that are not on my TBR. If you've been watching my channel for a little while, I've been on a reading journey where I've been trying to read books off of my TBR, so I dwindled down my physical book collection. But I wondered about maybe adding some other books that are not on my TBR that I've been wanting to read or try. And so that's why I decided to do this reading vlog. This is an exclusively like ebook, audiobook reading vlog because I don't own any of these books. These are all books that I'm getting either through Hoopla or Overdrive through my library. The first one is A Touch of Darkness, Scarlet St. Clair. I know this has been blowing up a lot. It's a Hades and Persephone retelling story and I always love those. I did try it once and I wasn't sure about the writing. The writing wasn't great when I first started it, but I'm curious to go back to it because I know it's super popular. It's kind of fantastical, but kind of not. Like, I kind of wonder if it's more of a modern day take of the story. And then I also have The Earl Takes All by Lorraine, Lorraine Heath, and I've been seeing this around a bit. It's an older title, like it's not a new title, but it's a historical romance, and it just sounds so good. I want to give it a try, and I haven't tried Lorraine Heath yet. So it would be really cool to give this author a try. The other book I actually already started and it's Beautiful Bastard by Christina Lauren. I've only read a couple Christina Lauren's In the Holidays and my favorite Half Night Stand and I enjoyed both of them. I liked The Holidays better than the other one but they're both four and five stars and I just like really enjoy their writing so I wanted to try Beautiful Bastard. That's like their first series I ever written. I didn't realize this was like a online sensation and then it got published but I thought that was pretty cool. So this is the current reading vlog. I hope you are willing to come along with me and let's just get on with the vlog. Beautiful Bastard by Christina Lauren is a romance about a woman who starts to have a physical relationship with her boss. It is an office romance. This definitely reads a lot steamier than the normal books I read. You, you don't always know what you're getting into when you read romance, I find, so this definitely reads a lot steamier. So I just wanted to make that clear. I know that's not ev to everyone's taste, but I am really enjoying this. So I follow Chloe, and she's like the assistant to Bennett Ryan, Bennett Ryan, and he's her boss. And it's clear that they've been working together for like nine months, and there's always been an attraction, at least for sure from his end, and then he kind of makes a move on her, and it's kind of about their new di office romance dynamic. It's really clear that he just like can't keep his hands off her, and I kind of like that. I kind of like it when like the, the hero is like super obsessed and just can't help himself. So it is fun. Like I said, leans a lot steamier, but I also like how it's clear that it's like a family business, and he's one of like, the sons who is now working there, I think as, as an executive or something like that. It's clear the family knows that he's attracted to her, but they knew that before then, even then he did. And I like that dynamic. I like how the family is kind of getting involved. And you know, Chloe's really confused. So I'm enjoying it. I have to see how far I am. So I'm 35% of the way through. I don't know if I'll finish it today or not, but I, I only started last night and I read some more today like this morning, and after doing some work, I'll probably get back to it. I have so much to update on because I've just been reading like crazy. I think it was two days ago, I actually did finish Beautiful Bastard by Christina Lauren. I really liked this, this ended up being a lot more surprising. I'm surprised that I liked it as much as I did. This story, there's a lot of intimate scenes, more than I'm used to, and so I think I was more surprised how much I liked it because there was still quite a bit of plot, which is helpful for me. Like, as a romance reader, I need lots of plot. I enjoyed seeing the characters falling in love. So in this one, it's Chloe and Bennett, and she is the intern, and he is her boss but they start having an intimate relationship and that starts off like right away. I kind of wish they prolonged it a bit more so we can get more tension and development, but there was some really good tension and longing between the two. And I just really loved seeing Bennett just fall for her so hard. Clearly he's in love with her even before he knew it. It was just so good. It in a lot of ways reminded me of the hating game and I think it's mostly because of the office romance and then there is a section or a time where they're off somewhere at a hotel 
and spending more time together and at the hotel is kind of when things come together more and then the final conflict i didn't quite understand <laughs> why she was so upset like he was not kind but at the same time it kind of didn't quite make sense to me but i did appreciate her kind of i don't know if standing up for herself is the right word but she kind of goes her own direction because she's an intern and so she was taking like on an account to help prepare for her masters or her maybe she's getting her phd i don't remember but she was using one of these accounts for her like thesis or her project at this company that she's been working for forever and you know she decides to kind of like take a step back actually leave the company and work for another one to work on a different project and i actually really appreciated that about her because it kind of showed that you know her career does actually matter to her over his own career because you know there is this power dynamic and I, I really appreciated her kind of like clarifying that through action that you know her career is important to her so i did really appreciate that even though the reasoning she got there was kind of confusing for me and it didn't quite make sense but i did appreciate that and i just love like how obsessed bennett was with her and i liked how she was really close to his family you know there was a lot of connection you know they really looked out for her and appreciated her being part of this company and so i did really enjoy it i think i'm going to give it like four stars um when i was re reading it i was like super obsessed with it but i had a lot of fun reading it touch of darkness by scarlett st Clair is an urban fantasy romance which is a hades and persephone retelling where hades tricks persephone into a deal where she has to create life in the underworld before time runs out I don't know what mood I was in, but I wanted to pick up A Touch of Darkness by Scarlett St. Clair. And I remember picking this up a couple months back and just reading a couple pages and I didn't think the writing was great. But I wanted to try again because I love Hades and Persephone and I wanted to give it a, a fair chance. And I take back that statement, like I don't think there's anything wrong with the writing. I love this story so much, I'm like so obsessed. I think this is my favorite Hades and Persephone stories. I don't think I've read many, but I think this is better than Neon Gods. I even think it's better than A Court of Mist and Fury. I think that's the right one. Yeah, I think it's even better than A Court of Mist and Fury. And I think it's because it kind of reads authentically, even though it's set in a modern day setting, there is still, I guess, fantastical elements. Like there is still an underworld, which is separate from the modern world. I think the balance between the two is really, really good. And I love Persephone and I love Hades. I think Hades is really true to his character. And Persephone, I like how headstrong she is and independent and pushes, you know, challenges Hades. Hades sometimes I find her annoying and she just like does make stupid decisions but I think that's almost part of our character like she's almost curious to a fault and I'm just like was so obsessed and you can see the connection and intimacy and like attraction right away I'm so obsessed with the story that I want to buy it but like <laughs> It's temporary out of stock on Amazon and I'm just like, oh, I want it so bad. And I'm not sure if I'm quite ready to pay full price for this book, but I understand the hype so much. And I don't know, I just love their kind of push and pull. And you know, it does get to the point where they're like kind of together, but there is still this like question of what they are. Of course there is the contract. So I guess I should talk about the setup. <laughs> So Persephone, she lives in New Athens. It's kind of like a modern take. I don't know, it's modern times, but yeah. So it's kind of like a modern day setting of Athens and it's called New Athens and she's going to university studying journalism. So she is the daughter of Demeter, Demeter? I don't know how to pronounce her name, but she is the daughter of Demeter and she's overproductive to the point of like smothering Persephone. Um, and Persephone it has been hidden away basically all her life and for some reason her mother still lets her go to university but there's always people trailing her and so she is quite smothered but she's going to university taking journalism and she has an internship at a local newspaper and her best friend 
and roommate convinces her to go to a nightclub which happens to be Hades nightclub and while she's there she strikes up a bargain with him like he tricks her and now they are in a contract which she has to fulfill within a certain amount of time and contract that is hard to fulfill and so she is kind of stuck in this limbo but in the meantime she gets to know Hades, she explores the underworld and it's their romance. I, that's all I'm gonna say. Um, I'm so eager to see Persephone's powers. I'm so excited for that. That hasn't quite happened yet. This one is like almost slow burn to in a way because the book is quite long. It takes like half of the book almost for them to get together. I mean, even then when they're together, they're kind of in this limbo, which I always love. You know, it's, there's still this like, will they be together? Will they not be? There is a conflict that is coming up, which is so annoying. Someone came to her and said something to convince her that you know, of course, Hades doesn't love her, which is like crazy. But as of right now, that is my only criticism. Um, I'll have to push through that part and then obviously things get resolved. But I'm so obsessed with the series that like I might just continue on and read it because I just love it so much. And yes, so that is my update. I probably will finish this today. I've read more than half and I only started yesterday, so. Takes All by Lorraine Heath is a historical romance, and in this romance, the new Earl poses as his twin brother so the wife, who had previous miscarriages, would not lose the baby. So, The Earl Takes All. I did not finish this one. I hate saying it, but I didn't, and I read like a majority of the story. I read about probably three quarters of the story. And there was a lot of things that I liked and a lot of things I didn't. So this is where the twin brother is posing as his brother and pretending to be previous Earl's wife's husband, like he's posing as the Earl and said that he himself actually died um, because she's pregnant and she's miscarried in the past. And so the dying Earl asked his brother to do this, to pose as himself so she doesn't lose the, ba the baby. And so during the deception part of the story, I actually kind of liked it because there's this tension of like when the things are going to get revealed. And it's pretty like, we pretty much know the direction of the story, like the structure of it. So when things got revealed, I felt like the heroine reacted appropriately. But you know, not a lot happened in this story. They weren't really doing much stuff. There's a lot of internal dialogue. So I think that's where I was starting to get lost. There just wasn't much going on, but I did really love this hero. He was clearly in love with the heroine, heroine and always has been. And you know, because she was pregnant and having to give birth and different things like that, like I really found it really romantic how he was there for her during these times where normally it only happens to couples who are together and married for a long time where he got to experience this with her and he was just there for her no matter what and I just found that really romantic. So I do, I did really like a lot of the things here. If it could hold my interest, I probably would have given this four stars, but the fact that it just couldn't keep me engaged any longer, like once they were together, I was kind of done. I didn't want the last dramatic reveal to happen. It's clear to me what the reveal is and it's just like, I'm done with the dramatics. I don't know if I can handle it anymore. These characters already went on this huge emotional journey as it is, but I loved how the her how the hero was just like there for the heroine in no matter what stage, like he's there for her no matter what, even though he in some ways betrayed her. And I love 
their passion for each other. They definitely are passionate with each other. And I liked how their relationship was a lot different than the previous relationship. So I do understand the angst and everything, but they didn't really do much. <laughs> so um, I was getting bored. The most exciting thing they did was like go on a picnic and it's just like, okay, this is getting a little boring. They are gonna go to London, but I was just like, I can't, I can't do it. I'm just not interested anymore. So I'm DNFing this. I'm giving it three stars since I read the majority of it and since it couldn't really quite hold my interest anymore. So sadly, it's more like a three star read. There were some good twists and I think the last twist is a good one as well, but I kind of figured it out anyways. So I don't want to read that part. I was just like, ugh. That's just like more dramatics for dramatic state, which Lauren Heath is known for. Three stars. And I think I'm going to end the vlog here. So beautiful bastard. I think I'm giving that five stars. I was fully engaged the whole time. No, it's definitely a lot steamier than their more current stuff. I really enjoyed it, so I gave it five stars. And again, A Touch of Darkness. I absolutely love that book. I would probably reread it, and I do want to continue on this series. I can't borrow it right now because I ran out of borrows through Hoopla, so maybe next month I will pick up the next one. But I gave that five stars. And then sadly, um, The Earl Takes All, I gave three stars. Uh, it didn't work out for me. So that's the end of this vlog. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe. If you've not done so, you can follow me on Goodreads and Instagram. And you know what? I'll wait and keep reading. Bye.